Hi, so I found a whole load of this stuff recently on the street. It's uh, flooring, it's just wooden flooring, and somebody clearly had their floor replaced and a lot of the planks were good. And it made me think about doing something with it, obviously. And what I was thinking about was uh, musical instruments. I mean, Christmas is up and coming, my brother's a musician, he loves this sort of stuff, so I thought about making him some kind of musical instrument. And of course you're thinking of things like a xylophone, or maybe a glockenspiel, or a, a tongue drum, something like that. So I had a look around to see what there was, and there's quite a few projects on it. But most people, what they do is they do it to a pattern, a fixed pattern, and they'll offer you that pattern. And that wasn't very satisfactory for me, because I don't like things where I don't really understand them. So I had a look at the relationship between materials and frequency, and sure enough, it is quite complicated. Unless you do one simple thing, and this is a simple trick. Make your material all the same thickness. If you make the material all the same thickness, like this, and we make it the same width, actually width doesn't matter that much with these materials, and we vary the length, then all we need to do is work out what that length will be. Now that's great for something like a tongue drum, or maybe a steel drum, or something like that, because you're going to be using a material of fixed thickness and fixed mass, and you can cut the line so the pieces are all the same thickness along as well as the same depth. So that's got to make the job a lot easier, I thought, and sure enough it does. Now, to illustrate, what I've done is I've taken a piece and I've just cut it into three sections, all of the same width and clearly of the same thickness. The only thing that they vary is by length, and if I give them a whack, the note changes. And you can hear that note changing only by the change in length of the material. So the question then is, obviously, OK, how do you use that information to work out what those length of materials are. We're going to need a little bit of maths for that, so let's have a close-up of that. OK, so what we need to know is one simple thing. That is, the length squared is equal to something k divided by the frequency. Once you know that, the whole job becomes really, really easy. We have to work out what k is. So how do we go about working out what k is? Well, k relates to the material you're using. So let's take a piece of our wood of some length. There we go, about 30 centimetres or so. Now, if I give that a whack, I'll get a frequency from it. Now, there are plenty of free bits of software around to run on your computer or to run on your phone, where if you hit something, you will get a frequency from it. So that will give us some kind of frequency. And let's say that frequency is 440 hertz, just for example. 440 hertz, incidentally, is A, centre A. So we get that, and it is 30 centimetres long. Then... If we put that into here, so remember, L squared is equal to K divided by frequency is the same thing as L squared times frequency is equal to K. Exactly the same, just moved the F around. Now I know my length, it's 30, so we can square 30 and we can multiply it by 440 and we will get the value of K. which is 396,000. It doesn't really matter. That's the value of K for all of these. So if I choose my material, the kind of wood, a metal, a piece of pipe, whatever it is, I choose that and keep that material the same, then I can work out exactly what those lengths have got to be. The only things that I need to know are the frequency I want and we already know K, which is 3960000, and that K is true for all of that material. If the material is the same and of the same dimensions, then we know the frequency, we know K. The frequency we want to change, and we want to change it because we want different notes. Now, you can look up the frequency. Wikipedia has a, a list of frequencies where the note value 
and the frequency in hertz are given in a table. You can just look them up. You can look up which notes you want, work out and um, see which frequencies they are. Then you pop them straight back into here and you'll be able to calculate the square of the length. So let's take an octave going from C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. They're the notes we want. We want eight pieces of wood of different lengths so that when we hit them we get exactly those notes and we have a single octave scale. This incidentally will work for metal, it'll work for pipe, it'll work for any kind of wood. If we look up the frequencies and we look at those in something like Wikipedia, these are the frequencies. There's A that we did before. Now we can use the formula that we had, where we're using the length squared is equal to k times frequency, and we can work out what the length squared is by multiplying our k value, which we worked out to be 3960000. So k times that gives me the length squared. And if I take the square root of the length squared, I will get actual lengths in centimetres of the material that I need to cut in order to get those notes. Now I hope that's clear because it really is extraordinarily simple to do this. So if I take those pieces of wood and cut them to those lengths they will have those notes when I hit them. That's true for wood, metal, pipe. So just to go through that one more time the formula you need is L squared is equal to K divided by the frequency. That K value you work out. So you get your piece of material and you work out the K value. You work out the K value because K is equal to L squared times the frequency. Get a sample. doesn't matter how big that sample is. Hit it and measure the frequency of it. Put the frequency and the known length in, you will calculate k. You can use that k every single time to work out what lengths you need using the frequencies you want to sound a note, so you can create an octave. So once you get your head around that formula, it is dead easy. So here's a sheet of aluminium, it's 6mm aluminium, that I've cut into those lengths that we did in the previous example. And if I hold those and give this a tap, <laughs> actually made a kind of harp out of it. Now, um, you want to cut the pieces just a little bit too long, because if you've got one where you measure the frequency and you tap each one, your frequency is probably a little out, but you can take a bit off to bring it absolutely in tune. And obviously it's easier to take something off than it is to add something on. So just cut them a little bit bigger and then file them down when you want to get it spot on using a frequency recorder on your computer. But doing that, you can now make glockenspiels, xylophones, tongue harps, wind chimes, all kinds of stuff, tubular bells even, that will be in tune. So if you've ever wanted to know how to do that, been worried about it, then that's the simple formula to do it. I hope it was of interest and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.